Hey, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me today. Things are about to get crazy busy for me around here. So I like to prepare a few freezer meals in advance so the entire week is fully taken care of as far as dinners go. So today I have five freezer meals that I wanna share with you that are easy to put together and won't take very much time at all to get done. So let's get cooking. This first recipe is my favorite chicken pot pie. It comes together so quickly and it's absolutely delicious. A great comfort food on one of those busy days. So first I like to start by chopping up my gold potatoes. You can use russets, but gold potatoes hold up to being frozen better in my opinion. So that's why I use those and I just don't take off the skins. I just chop them like that. Then I'll cube some chicken and add all of that to a pot along with one bag of mixed frozen veggies and then cover that with water and add some salt. I'm going to bring that to a boil and just let that boil for about 12 to 15 minutes or until that chicken is cooked through and those potatoes are fork tender. And while that's boiling, I'm going to go ahead and start making the filling for the pot pie, the actual saucy part of it. I'm just going to saute my onions and butter until they're soft and translucent, then add my flour and some salt, pepper, and poultry seasoning until that forms a paste. I'm going to let that cook just a couple minutes until it gets a little bit browned and then I'm going to slowly whisk in my chicken broth and my milk. And you want to make sure that this is very important here that you make sure you add just a half a cup or so at a time and whisk every single time you add liquid. This will just help reduce the chance of having any kind of lumps in your filling, like those flour lumps, you don't want that. So just make sure that you stir and add liquid and stir and add liquid. Then I'm gonna bring that to a boil and just let that sort of simmer for about a minute or so or until that sauce thickens. At this point, usually the boiled ingredients are all done. I'm gonna go ahead and strain those out and then add them to my filling here and just give it a good stir. And after I get it all stirred up, I'm just going to set that aside and prepare my crusts. Now I like to just pull them out of the refrigerator just a few minutes before I fill them, but if you're making the pie crust from scratch, go ahead and do that now. I just find that the already made you know, pie crusts from the freezer section are actually really, really good. And they come in a double set here, so it's perfect for this recipe. You already have two that are ready to go. And usually I have extra filling left over. You can either eat it for lunch or like I'm doing tonight, I'm just gonna use the excess from the dough that I put on top here to make a crust for the top of my third sort of pot pie. So I actually get three full dinners out of this recipe. So it's really great. Now I'm just rolling out the individual pastry dough on top of the pies and sealing them and just cutting off the excess and I put three slits in the top to make sure steam can escape and unfortunately my camera cut off when I was showing you how to wrap them but I just use wax paper first and then foil after that and of course you got to let the filling cool a little bit before you fill them in the you know, pie crust. So that way it's not like a piping hot pie, you know, going into the freezer. So just be sure, you know, to give it a few minutes and make sure it's not like, you know, boiling 200 something degrees when you fill it in there. And that way it can get nice and chilled in the freezer. So then when it's time to cook, I just pull it straight from the freezer and take off the wax paper and just leave it there on the foil and just cook that for about 45 to 60 minutes until it's nice and hot and bubbly and golden brown. This next recipe is a super easy and delicious slow cooker chicken chili, and I've made this before, but it's really great as a freezer meal. So to my bag, I'm just gonna add one pound of chicken breasts, a bell pepper diced, one diced yellow onion, two cups of fresh tomatoes or a can of diced tomatoes, one can of chili beans, a half a cup of salsa, a teaspoon of cumin, a teaspoon of garlic powder, a half a teaspoon of salt, and then I'll have toppings later on too. So I'm just gonna freeze that. Now when I'm ready to cook it, I wanna make sure I try to thaw it overnight. When I I made this one it was not completely thawed I don't recommend putting frozen things in your slow cooker because it may not reach temperature fast enough so I kicked mine up to high here for a couple hours and then put it on low after that to finish cooking it usually takes about four to five hours and then I'll shred the chicken and give it a good stir and put the lid on until I'm ready to serve and really that's it for this one the toppings that I love are either Greek yogurt or sour cream shredded cheese diced fresh onions jalapenos hot sauce and avocado this next recipe is one of my most popular popular recipes on my blog. It's my best meatloaf recipe and I've made a lot of meatloafs but this is my favorite. So to my bowl I'm going to mix together the ground meat. I'm using turkey but you can use ground beef. Then I add my panko breadcrumbs, onions, milk, egg, ketchup, Worcestershire, parsley, salt, garlic powder, and pepper. And I'm just going to give that a good stir. I like to start with the meat masher just because it breaks up that meat a little bit faster. Then I'll finish it with a fork and I try not to over mix it. I just mix until everything is combined. Now what's nice about this 
recipes, you don't need to use a loaf pan. I'm actually just going to put it directly onto my wax paper and just make any kind of shape you like. I like mine to be a little bit more surface area for the ketchup topping that I'm going to do later when I cook it. So that's why I'm making it sort of a rectangle, but you can make any old shape that you like. You can even make a Christmas tree shape or even a foot shape for Halloween, whatever you want. Then we're just going to wrap that in foil and then of course freeze it. Then when we're ready to cook this, I want to make sure that it's thawed overnight, although you don't have to with this one. You can bake it in the oven from frozen. It's just going to take a little bit longer and the steps for adding the topping are going to be a little bit different too if it's frozen. So since I've thawed it out, I'm just going to take it right out of the foil and the wax paper and then remove the wax paper and just leave the foil there so I have easy cleanup and I'm not wasting any foil. And then I'm just going to bake that at 375 degrees and that's going to probably take about 50 minutes or 60 minutes depending on how thick you've made your meatloaf and I'm just going to make sure I put the topping on right away here I'm just adding some ketchup brown sugar and my secret ingredient for this one is balsamic vinegar but if you like you can do mustard instead of course I just don't recommend freezing the topping I feel like the topping is better when you make it fresh and of course put as much or as little as you like it's up to you and then of course, if it's frozen, you're going to wanna bake it first and then put the topping on when you have about 20 or 30 minutes left. This next recipe is one of my personal favorites. It's called honey garlic chicken, and it can be cooked in the slow cooker or the instant pot or even on the stove top if you like. So to my bag, I'm gonna add one and a half pounds of chicken breast or thighs, about a quarter cup of soy sauce, quarter cup of ketchup, quarter cup of honey, then some onion, garlic, pepper, and then a little bit of oil. And then I'll close up the bag and freeze it just like that. And again, like most of the recipes, I wanna try to thaw this one overnight in the refrigerator to make sure it's easier to cook. But if it is frozen, I prefer to do the instant pot method. But if it's not frozen and it's nice and thawed out, then I like to do the slow cooker or on the stove top. So when it's time to cook, I of course, add that all to the slow cooker, nice and easy. And then I'm just going to set that on low for four to five hours or until that chicken is nice and cooked through. And it can go a little bit longer if you like. And if you decide to do this one in the instant pot, it really only takes about 20 minutes on regular pressure and then just let it naturally release for 10 minutes. Then then you can just continue with this next step, just shred the chicken. Now, if you want to make a thicker sauce, remove the chicken first, add a little bit of cornstarch to the sauce to thicken it up. Then you can add the shredded chicken back into the sauce and give it a stir. So it's up to you if you like it more saucy or if you like a thicker sauce. And I like to serve this one with rice and broccoli. It's a super delicious meal. I hope you give this one a try. This next recipe is my take on slow cooker marry me chicken. And I actually put it directly in the slow cooker, but all you have to do to make this a freezer meal is add all of the ingredients to the bag freeze it and then when you're ready you're just going to thaw it out a day in advance in the refrigerator and then just continue as the recipe calls for so i'm just going to mix together my chicken broth and flour and then add that to a slow cooker and add my chicken and then i'm going to top that with my minced garlic salt pepper italian seasoning paprika and then you can use sun-dried tomatoes if you have them but i had grape tomatoes on hand so i just put a little bit of salt on top a couple of tablespoons of butter and then i just set that on low for about five or six hours Hours. And about an hour in, I added a little bit of milk. You can use heavy cream if you like, that's up to you. And then just continue to cook. And then once that chicken is cooked through, we're just going to shred it, stir it all together. And then I'm meanwhile cooking some pasta on the stovetop. I'm going to strain that out and then add it directly to the sauce with the chicken here. Give it a stir and then you can serve it with some Parmesan or anything else that you'd like to add. It's absolutely delicious. Give this one a try. It's so fast, so easy, and definitely one of my new favorite recipes. I hope you enjoyed those recipes and at least got a little bit of inspiration for things to make in your house. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a little thumbs up. It really helps my channel. And if you'd like, you can check out a few of my other videos for lots more recipes and some meal plans too. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day.